this thing <laughs> The Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Shh! Calm down. No. I'm a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him, do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! Time to play. I'm on duty. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? From Dillsburg, Pennsylvania. But my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre. And those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was. Although, I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. 
You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, surely I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're guarding something. Oh, really? And what might it be? Could it possibly be a jewel that's making a long and perilous journey? You're guessing. You can't possibly know what's inside the safe. But if that were the case... Then I'd ask you why the train wasn't crawling with police. It's... it's a trap. <laughs> You've got a vivid imagination. I'll give you that. Well... That is impressive, I admit. But the fewer people involved, the better. We'll get along fine without you. You won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You're in my country. And I've been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Hmm. Clever and stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? <sighs> oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. All right.
We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. Would you be so kind as to close them? I don't want to sit in the draft. Oh, pardon me. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have, although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. If you work in the British Museum, then you must have experienced the burglary firsthand. No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well. Let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say, the famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual. Won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen! When did you...? When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich on the platform. James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything. Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. I... <sighs> I will have a look around. Thank you, sir.
don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partu is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seem so... eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally he would offer them discreetly after dinner. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry, powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. I'll leave the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Hmm, maybe if I just suck it. Perhaps he keeps the compartment keys in there. Locked. Hmm, where could he be? I made the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. Ah, Mr... Zellner. Right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No. Just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. 
At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? <laughs> I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Hello? Wow, don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. This is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With something inside the safe? <laughs> someone hasn't done his homework. What do you know of this Raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Rob, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner. 
Be my eyes and ears on the train and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zeldin? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of a grant that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Hmm. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Uh -huh. Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. Once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. the scissors here. If I need them, I know where to find them. Hmm. When I scratch the pencils lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong, fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... He's gone. Ah. I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable.
you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Something completely different this time. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Mm -hmm. That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. So long. So longer. Should... Should I ask for an autograph? That would be quite unprofessional. But on the other hand... The violin case looks pretty old. But that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought... Uh because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarnelli. Very valuable. Very, and also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. I think the violinist is hiding something. But to be sure that Matt was right, I have to get a look in the violin case. How can I do that without the violinist's consent? Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. But she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good Lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. An extraordinary woman, talented, intellectual, extremely rich, 
and the most successful rider of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. Excuse me, Lady Westmacott. Constable Zellner, how can I help you? I uh, was wondering if you might... Sign your book, Constable Zellner? If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. You are welcome. Thank you so very much. Another time. Farewell, Lady Westmacott. Constable. I think it's un although Mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him, and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and he left. I was seven. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm. No. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Mmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So longer. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. And so.
suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Oops, that was easier than expected. Hmm, batteries, a toothbrush, shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm, too small for the door, but it might still be useful. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. I don't believe that... It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then. Hurry up. Hello? Barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. I'd like to have a look around the compartment. Oh, um, of course. Nothing interesting. Wow. You have a very nice fountain pen. Privacy. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye.
I'm at. What I wanted to ask is... The violinist won't let me check his violin case. Of course he won't. He's hiding something. Should I distract him? Then you can have a look in his case. Hmm. What do you suggest? I... I could tell him there's a suitcase full of money in the next carriage. If he's a thief, I'll definitely want to take a look at it. I don't think he'll fall for that. Or I can insult him and then run away. He'll try to catch me and you'll have a chance to look in that violin case. Now that I think about it, this is something I have to attend to on my own. It would be expecting a bit much from a little boy. Little boy? You must be kid. Uh, sorry, uh, Sheriff, but your idea about distracting him is good all the same. Hi, Matt. What I wanted to ask is... I just remembered this. I'll come back later. That happens at your age. tip of the toothpick is stuck between the window and the runner. What are you doing? Didn't I make myself clear? The window stays closed. What are you doing there? I was taking your case for safekeeping since it was left here unattended. When I picked it up, the cover unlatched. I never leave my violin unattended. Ah, then no one else could have put this purse in your case. Um, someone must have snuck it in, like you. Aha, uh -huh, for sure. And you have a pistol in the case because... I don't owe you an explanation. It's mine. I have a gun license. Now, take the damned purse to the Baroness and leave me in peace. Just get lost. It won't be that easy. I'll report the incident to the Italian authorities in Venice. Oh, Inspector, did you find the Baroness's purse? I did indeed. You did? Out of my way, James. Wunderbar. Tremendous work, Inspector. Constable, Baroness. Constable Anton Jakob Zellner at your service. May I ask you where this beautiful train is taking you? <laughs> to the madhouse, I'm afraid. One is close to the brink of insanity with this constant shaking and rattling. Have you ever tried flying, Baroness? <laughs> Know how little luggage one is permitted upon an aeroplane? It defies all reason and good taste. Can you tell me anything about your fellow passengers, Baroness? No, not really. I could hardly care who's penned up in here with me. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. Lucien is here, the professor. Poor fellow. The eye of the Sphinx that was stolen belonged to his collection. Professor Lucien is an Egyptologist. As director of the Egyptian department at the British... Oh, that everything really upset him. Director Thomas told me he was a nervous wreck. I'll take my leave of you now, Baroness, and I do hope... Ha! Yes, indeed, Inspector. Constable. James? Phew! The butler... But what she had to say about Professor Lucien was in... He and Lagrand are in co...
Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Inspector Lebron, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right, we should. What? The light's gone out. Flashlights. Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's... it's a... Away with it! Take cover! 